To capture emission nebula in the night sky, I've been using this Optolong L Extreme filter for the last few years. And today we'll go over processing that captured data into a nice faux show or SHO palette using scripts in PixInsight. Although there is no S, so it'll be more like HOO or who. And we'll do all of that without touching pixel math. Thanks to various engineers around the world, we can use a handful of scripts that will do everything for us. And my goal today is to show you the various scripts that I use for my processing, so I won't spend too much time with the nitty gritty of processing the images. Some of the scripts we'll be looking at include scripts written by Franklin Merrick from SETI Astro. He has a suite of scripts, but the only two that we'll use are his automatic dynamic background extraction and his narrowband to RGB star combination script. We'll also use DB Extract by Raul Hussein, which is used to separate out the hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 channel from our dual narrowband data. We'll also use Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator at some point, created by Russell Croman. We'll also use Forex, created by Paul Hancock, to combine our starless data. And finally, we'll use Image Blend by Mike Cranfield to put everything together. I'll do some minor adjustments with stretching and curves, but I won't spend too much time there. And I've already done my stacking and integration, so we'll skip those steps and head directly into our integrated image. Okay, so I have my integrated master light here, and I'm just going to do a quick STF and unlinked STF. And by itself, this actually looks pretty good. And I could probably take this into Photoshop or keep it in PixInsight and do quite a bit of work on this to make it look a lot better. But thanks to a whole bunch of PixInsight scripts, uh, that work becomes a little bit easier. So let's go through the steps. So I just did STF. I'm going to do a quick dynamic crop. I have, you know, this saved, the setting saved for my camera sensor here, my 53MC Pro. So I'm just gonna just leave that. So it cropped out some of the star elongations on the sides. Normally at this point, I would do a uh, DBE or uh, dynamic background e extraction using using either uh, the automatic or dynamic background extraction or now thanks to SETI Astro we have under scripts SETI Astro automatic DBE which actually does a really nice job but after playing with my data uh, for a little while I noticed that I'm just gonna click this out that there's a ton of nebulosity around the area here and doing a background extraction kind of removes them so the only gradient I have is like here. So I'm just going to actually skip it and see what kind of results I get. Uh, and we can do an extraction later on if we need to. It's not the best process, but I'll show you what it looks like for me at least. So we're going to go to script and the next script we're going to use is called DB extract. So link to this in the description below. And, and this script allows you to extract your S2, HA and oxygen three from your OS, OSC images. Now, thanks to Raul Hussein. Thank you. This makes it so much easier. So we only need to select our camera sensor. So I have the IMX 5T3. And we have two options here. So HA and O3. So I have this one. So this is my L-Extreme filter. So it only has HA and O3. If you don't put S2 and O3 filter, I think, um, I think Dark Sky Geek or somebody said that the only real, only good S2 O3 filter is by Ascar. I don't have it. So I'm not going to select it. It's not going to create anything. Optional, it'll create a show image for SHO image for us. So we'll see what that looks like. It actually looks pretty good. And I don't want to close any intermediate O3 images. This actually doesn't do anything anyway, but I'm just going to uncheck it anyway. So we'll click on extract. All right, so that finished and we can close this and we have three new windows. We have one that says HSO, one that says HA, and one that says O3. So we'll just do real quick STF on each of them. So this is the HA signal. Looks really nice, always does. O3. Always looks a little sloppy, but uh, I took this from Border Lake Backyard. And now if you look at our HSO image here, well, it looks actually really nice. If I expand this, you can see them side by side. So it's going to fit. So if you look at these side by side, this is uh, this lo this looks like a really nice HSO palette. You know, we don't have the uh, the usual red here. We have a little golden color. So this by itself actually looks really nice. If we look in, we can see some other colors here as well. Looks nice. But I'm not going to use this. I'm going to recombine my HA and O3 data in a little bit. And zooming in, there's a little bit of noise. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to click on Noise X and remove some noise. You can use any of your, your favorite noise uh, reducer. Uh, I use Noise Exterminator. I just do 75% denoise and then 15% detail. 
And I'm going to do this on both of my O3 and HA images to make it a little bit better. All right, so the noise has been terminated. Looks, uh, looks much better. And now I'm going to remove the stars. So you can use Starnet++ or Star Exterminator if you have it, keeping the default settings. And I'm going to do this on each of my HA and O3 images so that I have both an HA starless, HA star, O3 starless, and O3 star. All right, so that extracted the stars from both of my images. And we're going to save this for later. So I'm just gonna leave them as HA stars and O3 stars here. I'll close this. And now if you look at this, it looks pretty nice, right? But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my ADBE here, my automatic dynamic background extraction. And that's in scripts, SETI Astro, and it's ADBE here. Uh, this is pretty simple. You just wanna make sure your, whatever image you're affecting is selected. So I'm doing HA. If you have like a dark nebula, you can use the user defined exclusion area, and then you get a preview, and then you can use, uh, and you can shift click to like, exclude stuff, right? But I'm not going to do that. And instead, I'm going to actually click on this rigidly fixed corner points. I found that, you know, since I have most of my gradients like in the corners here, I find that clicking this makes the images look a lot nicer, especially the O3. So we'll see what the O3 looks like. So I'll actually do the O3 first and then click on execute. So that completed. So if you look at our extracted background first, we can see this is the gradient that I found. Yeah, I knew that you know this part was pretty light, but I'll just close that. And you look at our this, you can see that this looks so much better than what we have here. Uh, much more detail, even though it's a little bit noisier, we can fix that. All cool, so I'm just gonna ex minimize that and put that there. So I'll do the same thing for the HA. So I'll go to automatic DBE, make sure HA is selected, rigidly fix corner. Um, so I did find a bug that uh, selected image. So changing this doesn't actually do anything. You just want to make sure that you select on your window first, and then you turn on automatic auto DBE, and then it and then it does it. Otherwise, I noticed that if I switch to you know it's on HA, and if I switch to O3, it'll still just do HA, but name it O3. It's very confusing. So um, did that a couple times and ran into a wall saying, hey, why does my HA and O3 look exactly the same? Okay, and this is our HA extracted background and our HA, and look at that, the difference between that and that. So much, so much difference, much sharper. Again, a little bit noisier, but we can fix that. So I'll minimize this that there. So next we're going to combine this into an SHO palette using 4X. So 4X, so it's not going to be in our utilities. We have 4X palette utility. It was created by Paul Hancock. Another amazing script which just makes combining this so much easier. We have two options here uh, for two channels or three channels. Since I don't have S2, I'll do two channels. And it asks for HA03, HA stars, and O3 stars. So we kind of have that, but I am going to select this check box to check this box if you only want a single 4x image and don't need any start images created because I don't want to combine those yet. So HA is going to be HA ADBE and my O3 is O3 ADBE. So it'll c collect this into a nice palette. So let's do that. All right, we got two files. We have a grayscale um, hydrogen alpha and oxygen HO. And this is what it looks like, kind of boring. We don't really use this. Uh, you can use this for masking if you want to uh, manipulate just what you see here. So I'm just gonna put ho over there. And then we have another one that says 4X. And if we expand this, we'll see that this is what it looks like. It looks super nice, right? So if you combine, compare this to what we saw with that, that came out of the other script. Um, so this is the before and this is after of splitting things up and putting them back together using 4x and there's like a lot of color that we can manipulate and so i'm just going to get rid of this i'll hide that because we don't need those at the moment and this looks really nice so there's a ton of noise um, we can increase the sharpness we can do a bunch of stuff to this i won't spend too much time doing that so and the best part about this is that you can actually go into your process console and if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see what exactly, what pixel math expression this is using. So, so you can actually copy these 
uh, formulas yourself into pixel math, manipulate them, change them the way you like, and then do it yourself. And then up here we have the HO um, pixel math expression. That one's much simpler. So this gives you an idea of exactly what that script is doing. It's pretty simple, but having it, you know, in a script itself in a user interface just makes things so much easier and a lot more beginner friendly in my opinion. So we have this here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a little bit of noise correction because I uh, do have a little bit of noise there. All right, cool. So if you zoom in, you can see it looks really nice, right? Looking around. It's loss of nebulosity. So at this point, you can do curves adjustments. You can play with the color saturation. You can play with the hue, you know, turn the, the gold into some other color back to red or blue or whatever floats your boat. But to save time on this video, I'm going to skip that. I am going to say that I'm happy with this color palette here. But right now, before I go any further, I'm just going to do a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to open my Unsharp mask. I'll uh, zoom into here. So it's already doing like a standard deviation of two. I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. Um, and if you turn off preview, you can see before and after. I don't know if you can see it. Just a little bit sharper, not too much. So I'll click apply. There we go. Yeah, this is too sharp. So yeah, so if you have Blur Exterminator, you can use Blur, um, Blur X. Uh, I currently don't have it. I should probably get it. Uh, the trial was amazing. Okay, so what's left to do? We need to apply our stretch. So, because remember, this is still a linear image. So if we uh, turn off the STF, you know, there's something there. So we'll turn this on. Let's open our histogram here. Uh, it's the old school way. So you know, I'm sure four X is there. And then I'm just gonna click and drag that. Oops, uh, turn on preview. So, okay, so this is a preview now. We can turn off STF to see what the preview will look like. There we go. Okay, cool. So we'll apply. And of course, you know, it doubles up. So we'll reset that. Um, and one thing I've been doing to get something sharper is if I just do another STF here, it does a little bit of STF and it makes things a little bit brighter. I don't know how I feel about like doing it twice, uh, like double stacking but it looks kind of nice. So this is current before, after, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it looks fine. So I just did that twice. And we can see like so much nebulosity like here, especially here. Yeah, looks, this looks great. Okay, cool. So I'll get rid of the preview, get rid of histogram. We can stop that. We can do a little bit of curves adjustments so we can up the saturation. Uh, you can go crazy with uh, you know, doing the, the each color channel, but I'm just gonna do a slight S curve. Of course, turn on preview. I always forget preview. So I'll just reset this so I know what I'm doing. So tiny bit, so turn it off and on. Okay, so that's that. And then, so I'll click on apply reset and then i'm going to do a little bit of the lightness so this is the luminance right make that bright and then make the the, the shadows darker so it adds a little bit of contrast again this is uh like totally up to you what you want to do i don't want to do too much so you can see that it makes the the gold glow a little bit so if turn it on and off okay cool so i'll press okay done and now the only thing left to do is combine the stars but before we combine the stars there's another really cool script that comes with SETI Astro and that's NB to RGB so what this is doing is doing narrowband stars to RGB star combination this is going to take our two images here and apply some color to them and it has some color data from the O3 and HA so it's kind of guesstimating what color each of the stars should be so it, it takes three options. So HA stars is ma mandatory. So it's going to be HA stars. O3 stars is mandatory. And then S2 stars, it's optional. So we don't need it. And then we have this option here. So if you have just a single image where these are already combined, you can use this and it will take the stars out, do its thing and put them right back in. Uh, I have actually not been able to successfully use this. Uh, 
it either doesn't work or it errors out. So um, maybe there will be an update soon. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. But anyway, so I'm just going to leave that blank since I don't need it anyway. Uh, I'll leave this unchecked green channel blend ratio and I will do a star stretch. Uh, what I find works for me is like, like 5.6, 5.7 and then a color boost. I'm going to increase that by 15% and I'll click on execute. And this will create a new file for me and be to RGB stars. So now if we zoom in, we can see like star colors, right? We can see uh, some reds, some oranges, whites, blues. It looks really, really nice compared to this. And we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this. And this is actually already stretched since we checked that box. So like doing another STF makes it look super weird. So we'll get rid of that, we'll close that. So now we're gonna use our final script. So that's utilities, we have image blend. This is just another script that makes life easy. So you can use pixel math to put things together. There are several ways you can, use, you can do put, put everything back together. But image blend here, you just click on your view, you click on your star stars image, your starless image. Um, you have some adjustment parameters here. Click on your blend mode, usually just do screen and it'll put everything together for you. Um, so I opened this and my view and my, my both views were automatically set. And that's because that's what I used the last few times I've uh, used this workflow. So it remembers, but if it's your first time using it, you'll probably get no view selected. So it'll look like something like this and you'll have to select your four X palette image or, uh, find whatever identifier you called it All right, to zoom in. We're just going to click on this. And then we'll, there we go, double click and it goes into the zoom. And you can see that these are the stars, so it looks like, it looks, you know, we have some red stars here, some white stars here, we have a blue star here, and it looks really nice. So we're setting zoom, you can always turn off the preview, turn it on, and this actually looks super nice. I'm happy with it. So I'm just gonna click on apply, and this will create a new file for me. And I can close this, and I have this one. It's called image blend. So Let's take a look at the different versions that we've seen so far. So this is our final product, Image Blend. We have this coming out of Forex. This is our first HSO palette that was spat out by DB Extract. Again, looks really nice. And finally, we have the very first image here. So this is just an integrated image. So this is uh, like a few years ago, I would have been really happy with just this itself and uh, set up. So here we go. I hope this video was helpful in highlighting some of the scripts that I use for my dual narrowband processing in PixInsight. If you have a favorite PixInsight script that you use, let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything specific you want me to cover in a future video, also let me know in the comments below. Until next time, clear skies.